construed manager Christianity's position. Scientific study confirms the Sudarium closely fits the Shroud Man. The prior video introduces the bloody face cloth known as the Sudarium of Oviedo, the research scientists known as CES, and the historical record of the cloth and its travels. The Sudarium's bloodstains visually fit the Shroud Man's three dimensional features. Now we look at CES's investigations in more detail. These free resources offer good summaries, but to learn the chain of reasoning, this recent book by CES member Cesar Barta is a great source. To replicate the stains, CES scientists used infrared, UV, and transparency photography, along with thousands of experiments and a model head fitted out with tubes of human blood and serum. They crafted 2,420 stains in all combinations of different factors. Once dried at room temperature, they compared with photographs of the sidarium. Here are their general findings. The stains are real human blood and clear fluid. At least 14 blood tests and a positive test for human mitochondrial DNA confirmed this. Also, both cloths test positive for blood type AB. Because ancient blood can degrade to falsely test as AB, however, we won't give this too much weight unless more testing confirms it. Now on to specific findings. The Shroud Man was crucified. The Sudarium fits. The darkest stains line up with the Shroud Man's nose and mouth, soaking and revealing a mustache and beard. So he was a he. The best replica of the main stain was produced by a slow, smooth, and steady flow of blood and the clear liquid of pulmonary edema from the lungs for about an hour. The ratio of lung fluid to blood was 6 to 1, the same as the shroud's side wound. As a bonus, it was observed that this mixture simulated fingerprints well. CES found two handprints on the cloth. The slow and steady flow means he was not breathing for about an hour, so he was dead. The blood and lung fluid, therefore, are post-mortem. Overlapping face stains show the darkest got on the cloth first, then drained down the face. This means he died upright. There are only a few options. He wasn't hanged. That blocks the airway, so lung fluid couldn't reach the nose and mouth. He wasn't impaled. He oozed post-mortem blood, but impaled victims die of massive internal blood loss. Conclusion? The Sudarium wrapped a crucified man. The Shroud Man was crowned with thorns. The Sudarium fits. See these many pointed stains in the occipital region. Magnified, they show concentric halos. CES could only reproduce these stains using whole lifeblood drawn from the researchers themselves. Diluted blood, blood from corpses, and blood treated with anticoagulants didn't work. Their experiments verified how the coagulation process formed the halos. Infrared and UV photos confirm the pointed stains are quite different from the main stains. The Shroud Man was scourged. The Sudarium fits. First, the victim suffered intense trauma shortly before death. CES found fibrin, a protein involved in blood clotting. The fibrin blobs were large and free from blood elements, telling medical experts they most likely formed within a pleural or pericardial cavity. To reach such a condition, the individual must undergo a severe trauma, such as scourging, and a few hours must elapse to allow the fibrin formation. Second, although we shouldn't expect many clues on the head cloth, since the shroud man's scourge wounds are body blows, one mark is intriguing. The mark has no exact counterpart on the Turin cloth, but it matches the size, shape, and general location of scourge marks on the shroud man's shoulders. CES offers a rationale. The sudarium clumped the hair into a ponytail shape, exposing the wound. When the cloth was removed in the tomb, the hair relaxed a little hiding the wound on the shroud. Barta notes similarities between the cloths for dust, pollen, and the fabrics too, which provide avenues for additional research. All this is compelling evidence of congruence. 
but several radiocarbon tests date the Sudarium to 700 years after Jesus. Recall that C14 tests date the Shroud to 1300 years after Jesus. So here's a question. Why does so much evidence show the cloths wrap the same man, yet have C14 dates 600 years apart? If CES's inferences are correct, one or both tests are wrong. Let's quickly review how C14 dating works. All living organisms create carbon-14, which decays at a known rate after death. The tests measure the difference between the residual C14 and the assumed carbon starting value. This is why it is not foolproof. If the assumed starting value is wrong, or if contamination or other events alter the residual C14, the test won't tell the artifact's true age. Video 3.6 lists a few false results. Barta's book analyzes over 300 tests. 20% gave the wrong date. All this means skeptics' over-reliance on C14 dating is short-sighted. Conversely, those who conclude the shroud wrapped Jesus investigated the import of this question for years. Nuclear engineer Robert Rucker hypothesizes the shroud image formed from a burst of energy particles and neutrons that emitted from the body in the shroud. Absorption of a small fraction of these neutrons would have produced new C14 on the cloth. Both cloths would then test younger than they are. And since emissions diminish with distance, the shroud would have more C14 and look younger than the face cloth, which the Gospels report was nearby but in its own separate place. Image formation theories are a topic of a future video. In sum, the bulk of evidence shows the sudarium and shroud both wrapped the same corpse. Since C14 tests date each 600 years apart, one or both tests are wrong. At least one image formation theory scientifically harmonizes these observations. Next, we wrap up the Sudarium videos by showing how precisely it resolves shroud enigmas and fills gospel gaps.